know that when Jesus shed his blood, he not only did so for our redemption, for our sins, but your Bible declares that by the stripes of Jesus, by the blood that was shed on Calvary, how many knows we're healed? We're healed. Do we believe in healing today, church? Do we believe in prayer today? Do we believe there's power in that blood she was singing about this morning? Oh, I believe that with all my heart today. I believe there's still power in the blood. I want us to pray this morning. I had a special request come to my attention for Bill Reeks. This is Sister Nova's uh, brother. He was taken to an emergency surgery. Had a word come to the office today. Remember Sister Nova's brother this morning. We want to also continue to remember uh, Sister Shirley and Brother Lawrence Gillenwater. Sister Shirley's mom passed away this week. The service was this week. Continue to hold them up, lift them up in your prayers. I'm glad to see Sister Lucille here today. Praise God, doing better. But we're praying for her and asking the Lord to continue to touch her. Good to see Sister Myrna here today. We're still praying for Brother Joe, her brother recovering from some burns on his body in the Lexington Hospital. I tell you what, there are a lot of needs. Everybody today have some needs in your prayer list, have some needs in your family. We've all got them today. I have some special needs, like for the church, remember special requests that the pastor has today. And I know God is a prayer answering God. Sister Helen, God's able to touch your body today by the power of God. Sister Wooder, if the Lord is touching your body, I confess that and I believe that in the name of Jesus today. There's a gentleman in the Veterans Hospital this week we were able to see. We talked about him before and Sister Linda's relation back here, her brother, uh, Gene Schaefer. We want to call Gene's name out to the Lord in prayer. God is able to completely touch his body. He got saved a few weeks ago. How many knows that's the best thing in the world? He got saved a few weeks ago and uh, God's touching his life, moving on his life. There are other things we're going to believe God for. But I want us to take this to the Lord in prayer. You know, one of the things we've been talking about in our sermon series this uh, month is one of the foundational truths of a, of a life that's solid, built on a solid foundation, is, is that of, that has the, 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 the leg of prayer built into it. Prayer, seeking the Lord. Seek the Lord and He'll be found of you. How many knows it's a privilege to do what we're fixing to do right here? It's a privilege to do what we're about to do right here. Sixty uh, billion people have lived on planet Earth, they tell me. Right now they say there's about six and a half billion that are on planet Earth right now. You know, God's pretty busy with all that. How many knows that's the truth? That's a lot of folks. But you know what? He still wants to hear the cries of His children. He has an ear listening to your cry today. I tell you what, that's a revelation right there. God has time for us this morning there's power in the blood would you reach up in faith with the pastor I don't know we didn't get them all out but how many can just call those names that you can remember and call the names out that you know of today let's believe God let's trust God in this time of prayer that God is going to minister to his needs let's pray Heavenly Father we come to you right now in the name of Jesus we just thank you Lord for an opportunity to pray I believe they're a praying church. I believe this is a praying people today. I believe by the power of Almighty God, Lord, you're able to meet the need. You're able to satisfy the need. You're able to, oh, hallelujah, Lord, I just confess your word today. You said in your word, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, says the Lord. So, Father, I rebuke every sickness today. I rebuke every disease today. I rebuke every affliction today. I rebuke every attack of the enemy this morning. I stand opposed to it. I stand against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Word of God is true. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus that were bore upon His back, there's healing for my life. There's healing for families today. There's healing for marriages today. There's healing and restoration for homes and families today, Father. And so we just call them out to you this morning, Father. We believe, Lord. We're passionate about it. We know, God, your ear is attuned to the righteous. You said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. Lord, we don't come as beggars today, but we come as the sons and the daughters of 
of God. We come as children of God. We come as joint heirs with Jesus Christ today. We believe we have privilege today. We have spiritual rights this morning. And we believe it today according to the Word of God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on, church. The Lord is in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lowest Valley. It's the blood gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. We just need to sing a little bit of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad it reaches this morning? Oh, to the highest mountain it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's the blood. He gives me strength from day to day. you believe it, let's give the Lord a hand offering of praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your holy name today, Lord. I believe the answer's on the way. Hallelujah. I believe the answer's on the way. Hallelujah. Well, turn to somebody as you're being seated this morning and tell them you're at the right place at the right time. Praise God. Amen. At the right place at the right time. I tell you, I just love Jesus today. How about you? Isn't the Lord good? Hope you had a great week this week. Amen. Hope you had a blessed week. Well, today we're going to try to finish up and conclude a little thing that we've been talking about this month. About a solid life. Wanting a solid life. In God, a solid foundation, and sometimes that means in our life from time to time we have some things restored. We ask God to restore some things in our life. We've been studying the kings of Judah, in particular we've been talking about King, uh, what was that first one, anybody remember? Oh, I better go back and preach that again today, huh? I'm just teasing you. King Asa, and uh, how he, God used him moved on his heart to restore prayer. How many of those prayers are real important today? What a, what a thing we need to have. You know, as a nation, I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but they started getting involved with worship in Baal and, and they forgot to pray. They, they lost out with their prayer life, praying to God. And so when King Asa come on the throne, God moved on his heart. And one of the things that he began to restore in the kingdom of Judah was the seeking after God. He sought God with all heart. Fact is, the Bible says they made a covenant with God. They got real serious about it. How many knows when we get real serious about God, God gets real serious about us? I mean, they made a covenant to God. They made a promise to God. And they began to pray. And they began to seek God. And he said, as you seek me, I will be found of you. But if you forsake me, I will forsake you. So they took it serious. And they began to pursue after God with all their mind, all their heart, all their soul. And the thing I love about that passage is God gave them rest. Anybody here could enjoy some spiritual rest today. Some good rest. He gave them rest on every side. He gave them rest in the kingdom. They were able to fortify the walls and build up the city. They were in a time of peace, a time of rest. The Bible says a time of quiet. Wow, I'll tell you what. You start praying and believe in God, and guess what? The enemy has to leave you alone. Can I get a witness? Has to give you peace. Has to give you quiet. But we have to seek God. So that's that first leg in this stool we were talking about. Getting some things up under your life. You've got to have prayer. If it was good enough and important enough for a kingdom, it's important for our life. 
And then we talked about King Jehoshaphat, jumping Jehoshaphat. Remember that king? He came along and he said, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to reestablish the Word of God. And he got all the priests together. He got all the people together that were priests in that day. And he said, I want you to take the law of God and I want you to go to every city and every village and I want you to go to all the different town halls, all the places you can find, and I want you to teach them the laws or the commandments of God. How many knows God's Word needs to be a foundation in our life? If it was good enough for uh, King Jehoshaphat to say, hey, God moved on King Aza's heart to restore prayer to the kingdom, I hear the Lord speaking to my kingship, to my heart, that we need to get the Word of God back in the place of prominence, begin to teach it, begin to proclaim it. And I tell you what, I'll just be real honest about it. My only hope for America today, and I love this country. I'm so thankful for this country. You know, I heard somebody say, with all of our problem, it's still the place where we have a, a border problem, not because people are wanting to get out of the country it's because people are wanting to get in this country I mean knows this is a good place to live it's a good place to live but even with all of our problems and all the things we're fa I believe the real hope for America is to get get back in love with the Word of God the commands of God we need as a nation for the Word of God to take we don't need to be taking the Word of God out of the schools how many knows we need the Word of God back in the school we need prayer back in school. We need, like the Judah needed in that, need, that hour, we need a revival of God's Word. Well, the same thing is a foundation for our life today. We need fresh Word from God. We need fresh manna from God. Last week we talked about how important it was to put prayer in our life and how important it was to have the Word of God in our life. Have a time to pray. Have a time to read. A systematic time to read. Probably in the morning is the time I would try to encourage you to find some time to read God's Word. I'm here to remind us again today, church, God has fresh manna from heaven for our life. Anybody like a hot biscuit? Oh, we won't go there again today. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, there are some hot biscuits in the book. How many of those heavens oven is baking and you don't have to find some old stale cracker and try to live your life from day to day on some stale revelation or some, some cracker, some statistic out of the Word of God. You don't have to get your Bible out and kind of put a blindfold on and say, okay, God, where do you want me to read today? No, you don't have to do that. I'm telling you, if you begin to read the Word of God, God will speak something fresh into our lives. God will bake something fresh fresh for us. This is the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How many knows what's going to sustain our life? What's going to give us a solid foundation in our life is to build our future not on somebody's opinion, not on somebody's secondhand information, but we need to build our lives on thus saith the Lord, thus saith the word of God. I'm telling you, I don't make an apology for it. I'm not ashamed of of it today. I believe the grass may wither and the flower may fade, but as the prophet of old said, the Word of God shall stand forever. Oh, how many knows the Word of God is that thing that we need in our life? Oh, hallelujah. And they taught throughout the kingdom and God restored the Word of God. So think about it for a moment. We've got prayer going on on one side and we've got the Word of God. We've got some hot biscuits helping us over here on this side. Oh, hallelujah. Well, today I want you to look with the pastor. Yeah, I heard hot cornbread. I was taken out to eat. That reminds me, uh, a couple weekends ago, and uh, they brought to our table. Uh, boy, you got me started on something now. <laughs> brought to our table an appetizer of fresh hot cornbread out of the skillet. Anybody getting hungry yet? Don't leave yet. And I looked up at that waitress and she said, what would you like to drink? I looked up at her and I said, I'd like a glass of buttermilk. <clears throat> she looked back at me. Well, really caught her. She started to write down. She said, what'd you say? <laughs> I said, buttermilk. She said, I don't think we got any of that. I said, okay, find me something else. But uh, cornbread's good too. Biscuits are good. But how many knows God's word is that manna from heaven that we need today? So let's look together. Can we look together? I want us to look at Jehoshaphat for a minute. Talk about this third leg on this stool. Look at verse 1 of chapter 17. It says, Then Jehoshaphat his son 
reigned in his place and strengthened him against Israel. And we talked about a little bit of that last week. And then we went to verse 9. Verse 9, so they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. And they went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. They taught the word of God. Now go over to chapter 20 with the pastor. Same book, Second Chronicles, chapter 20. We're going to read it verse 1. The Bible says here, this was in Jehoshaphat's reign, still Jehoshaphat. And he was surrounded by three armies, three enemies. One were the Ammonites, one was the Moabites, and then there were those at Mount Seir. And he had these three enemies. Look at verse 1, chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles, first, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. The Bible says, It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others uh, with them, besides the Amorites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Look at verse 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. So here they are. They're surrounded by three enemies, three different armies, three armies against one army. And Jehoshaphat knew that they were in trouble. He knew they needed help from the Lord. And they begin to proclaim a fast and they begin to seek the Lord and they begin to pray. And really verse 5 or 6 down through verse 11 is a prayer that Jehoshaphat again makes to God. But now look at verse 12. Verse 12, he continues the prayer, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I'm going to read that again. He's praying. He says, God, you know, can't you judge them? We don't have any power against this great multitude. We're outnumbered three to one that's coming against us, and we really don't know what to do. But the key part of this verse is, but our eyes are upon you. How many knows it's real important to keep your eyes on the Lord today? You know, the writer in Hebrews said, looking unto Jesus, which is the author and the finisher of our faith. How many knows what the Lord begins in our life, He's able to bring it to a complete product. He's able to finalize those things. And so they were in this big heated warfare, three against one, and they were in trouble. And He began to pray. And he was asking for God's help. And they proclaimed the fast, and they were praying, and they really didn't know what to do. You know, there's some of you here today, you've had some things going on in your life, and you've been in some situations, and you've been in some circumstances, and there have been some times in your life you felt just like Jehoshaphat felt. You really didn't know which direction to turn. You, you thought about going right, but you weren't sure about that. And you thought about going left, and you were looking for a way to go over, and a way to go under, and a way around, and you just really didn't know what to do. And some of you here today, even this week, you've had some difficulties at work. Or you've had some problems on the job. Or you've ran into a snag at school. Or maybe there's been some things going on at the house. And, and there's been some stress levels that have been coming up in your own life this week. And, and from time to time, I don't care how long you've been serving God and how much you've been praying, reading the Word of God, all that's good and it's important and it stabilizes our life. But from time to time, as long as we live in this robe of flesh, how many knows they're going to come under attack? There's going to be an attack. There's going to be something happen. And we're not going to know exactly what to do. But, he said, even though I don't know what to do, my eyes are upon you, Lord. Oh, I want to tell you something today, church. When you don't know what to do, look up. Did you hear the pastor today? When you don't know what to do, look up. Put your eyes upon the Lord. Now look, there was another prophet that came by. Verse 14, the Spirit of the Lord came upon a guy named Jezreel. And he was a prophet, and this is what he spoke. Look at verse 15. He said, listen. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, now the Lord's talking to you. Listen. Listen, all of you Judah. He's talking to them, but he's talking to us today. All of you Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but it is, amen, it is the Lord's, it is God's. How many is glad about that today? Hallelujah. 
Oh, you say, Pastor, why is this so important? We need to understand when we come under attack or when we feel outnumbered or when it seems like the enemy is trying to back us up in the corner and we don't know which way to turn, something that will bring stability to your life, something that will bring a f solid foundation to your life is to make sure you don't get looking at the things around you in the natural, but you keep your focus on the things in the spiritual realm. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know which way to go, but my eyes are upon the Lord and we need to understand that the battle is not ours uh, but the battle is the Lord's oh hallelujah how many knows the Lord is strong and mighty today strong and mighty in battle the Lord our God is a man of war this morning hallelujah there's nothing too difficult for him don't look at your checkbook balance uh, look to the God that owns all the resources in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth oh hallelujah don't stress out about the things that are going on at work or the things that are going on at the house are the things that are going on at school are the things that are going on with the kids are the grandkids when you don't know what to do just remember the battle is not yours but the battle is the Lord's hallelujah cast your eyes upon the problem solver cast your eyes upon the mountain mover cast your eyes upon the mind regulator cast your eyes upon the heart fixer does anybody know who I'm preaching about today he is Lord God Jehovah there is nothing too difficult for him but all things are subject under his power under his authority under his footstool this morning praise God and I want you to know when it seems that the enemy has you backed up into a corner and you're outnumbered three to one uh, look to Jesus hallelujah cast your eyes on Jesus and know that the battle is the Lord's somebody give the Lord a shout of praise today Oh, hallelujah. And look what happens. Verse 17. You need not to fight this battle, but position yourselves. Stand still and see what? The salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord is with you. How many is glad about that today? And Jehoshaphat bowed his head. Look at this. And he put his face to the ground and Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord and they worshiped the Lord. Can you think about that with the pastor for a minute? I mean, here you have the whole kingdom, the whole nation. They join the king, Jehoshaphat, and they bow themselves prostrate before God, and they begin to worship God. I want you to know worship today. I know sometimes we think about worship and praise, and that's really the third part of this stool I want to talk about today, is yes, we need prayer. Yes, we need the Word of God, but we need to be a people that has up under us as a foundation a heart of praise and a heart of worship can I get a witness on that today and they were people that praise there are people that worship they lay prostrate before God when they figured out that the battle was not theirs but it was God and they knew the only way out was to, to lean upon the Lord and put their eyes upon him and when God told them to position themselves uh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord I'm with you Jerusalem I'm with you Judah amen the Lord is with you the only response for Jehoshaphat and for Judah was to find some place to lay prostrate before God and to begin to worship Him and to begin to praise Him and to begin to honor Him. Somebody says, well, I don't know if I could do all that. I don't know if I could get into all that type of praise or all that. My friend, you know what? Sometimes we did, we're just a little bit too dignified because we've never got that desperate yet. We've never had that problem or that valley or that difficulty hit us yet. But I want you to know when the doctor says uh, you've only got so long to live, you don't mind finding a place to lay before God and worship Him and praise Him when the lawyers come and say there's no way out of this situation you don't mind to get desperate enough to find a place to worship Him and to praise Him and to oh I don't know who I'm preaching to today but I want you to know He is Lord God Jehovah He's strong in battle He's strong in mighty the Lord is with you and He wants you to be a praiser He wants you to be a worshiper he wants you to be somebody that knows how to praise their God. Lift up holy hands and exalt His holy name. Somebody give Him a shout of praise today. Woo! Hallelujah! 
hallelujah. I tell you, when you get desperate, you don't care where you are, who hears you, or what's around you. You just know you serve a mighty big God. He's bigger than all my problems. Bigger than all my fears. He's bigger than all my unbelief. He's bigger than all my doubts. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to exalt His holy name. Oh, hallelujah. I'm about to get Pentecostal now. Hallelujah. Woo, it's going to be all, you know, cute today. But I mean, knows there's times you're not supposed to be too cute. Huh? There are serious times. You need to know how to work. You need to have this stabilized in your life. You need to know that you know how and you have a relationship with God that you can worship God and praise God. Not just when you're on the mountain, but even when you're walking through the valley, you can still have a song in your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, look at it. Can you imagine if the president, they, this is the leader of Judah, Laying prostrate, worshiping God. Could you imagine if they shot the camera in the Oval Office one day and they couldn't find President Bush? And they wondered, where in the world is he? Somebody said, oh, there he is. He's over there by the side of the desk, prostrate, laying down. What's he doing? He's worshiping God. He's worshiping God. He's bowed himself for God because he knows it's bigger than him. He knows this battle's not his. He knows the battle's the Lord's. He knows that he can't do it, and he sometimes don't know which direction to go. But all he knows to do is put his eyes upon the Lord. How many knows you're serving a God like that? Hallelujah! Look what happens. Verse 19: The Levites, the children of the Korahites, and the children of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with voices. Soft and sweet. Wait a minute. What did that say? Voices. What? Wait a minute. We all better look at that one more time. With voices. What? Loud and high. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Loud and high. Now, I know people worship God and praise God in different ways, and I think it's all good. Some of my greatest blessings is not me really being all that loud or demonstrative. It's just something, sometimes just sitting around and I'll just have big tears coming down. And God's blessing me and he's, he's doing something. But I tell you what, there are times for the church to praise and worship Him in a loud shout of praise. Come on church, are you with me? With us? You know, I tell you what, I'm glad the Lord delivered me from old, dry, dead church service. I said, y'all didn't hear. I said, I'm glad the Lord's delivered me from old, dry, dead church services. I've been some church services that didn't feel like you was in God's house. Felt like you was in a funeral home. I wish somebody helped me now. But I tell you what, I'm glad today when God's people come together, I believe we can make a high praise unto God. I believe we can have a high energy praise unto the Lord. I'm not saying it's always high praise. I'm not saying that today. But I do believe there's times when God's people come together corporately. Amen. We need to come together and praise Him, not just with soft and sweet voices, but we need to praise Him with loud and high voices. Oh, hallelujah. We need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We need to clap our hands, all you people. We need to let God know He is God. He is the mighty warrior. Our eyes are upon Him. He is the leader. He's the chief. He is leading us. And we've come to praise and to worship His holy name. Oh, let's praise Him a little bit right now. Come on, church. Come on, praise Him with a loud voice. Praise Him with a loud voice. You know the Bible says praise Him on the psaltery. Praise Him on the harp. Uh, praise Him on the timbrel. Praise Him with the dance. Uh, praise Him with the string instruments. Praise Him with the organ. Praise Him everything that had breath. Let Him pray. Oh, I wish somebody would get a spirit of praise on their life. I wish somebody get a spirit of worship upon their life. I wonder what would happen if somebody got happy. I wonder what would happen if somebody began to put their eyes upon the... Oh, come on, 
church, he's worthy. The Lord is worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, don't get me started today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We can praise him a little longer. A little longer today. Hallelujah. Praise him, rocks and mountains. Praise him, land and sea. Praise him, hills and valleys. Praise him, everything. Let everything that hath breath. Hallelujah. I tell you, when you get desperate, you don't care what anybody says. You don't care who's around you. You just have the spirit of Mary that comes upon your life and you're willing to break open the alabaster box and to pour out the costly perfume and say, Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, there's going to be some times the enemy's going to attack. You're going to be outnumbered three to one. Yes, you better know how to pray. Yes, you better know how to get into the Word of God. But yes, you better know how to fall prostrate before Him and bow yourself in His presence and know how to find your worship closet and begin to praise Him and to worship Him and to magnify Him, not just in the good days, but even in the bad days. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been to a few UK games. Hello? UK fans know how to get rowdy. Help me now, church. I've been to a few Louisville games. Louisville knows how to get rowdy in the stands. But I want you to know, if anybody got a reason to do a little shouting... Anybody got a reason to lift their voice strong and mighty and high? I don't need a hot dog and a soft drink and somebody next to me getting all excited to get me enthused about Jesus. No, all I got to do is remember the battle's not mine. Oh, hallelujah. But the battle is the Lord's. Jesus uh, I'm tired of coming in at 11 o'clock sharp and going out at 12 o'clock dull I'm delivered from a dead church service today I've come to worship God I've come to praise God I've come to give him all the glory Woo! hallelujah wow I better go on I got some more scripture here Praise God. Say, oh, you know God's not deaf. I know. He ain't nervous either. Hello? Please don't misunderstand your pastor. I'm not saying it's all in the shout, in the run, in the buck, in the jump. But there are times. There ought to be some high praise. Come on, church some high energy and some high praise in the house of God and when people come in among us they say my Lord there's not sorrow in the camp there's some joy in the camp hallelujah there's praise in the house oh hallelujah well let's look a minute hallelujah I gotta get to this fourth leg here uh, <clears throat> So we see they begin to worship God. Look at verse 21. Next day, they still surrounded, didn't know what to do. Verse 21, when he consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before an army and were saying praise.